Hi, I'm Jeff Goodman and welcome to scubavast.com. Recently, I was invited by the Grenada Tourism Authority to visit Grenada and Karakou to see what the diving there had to offer. Time was short uh, as usual, um, but I did have the opportunity to dive quite a few sites as well as meet many of the dive operators there. I loved it. The diving was excellent, uh, the location is stunning, and uh, the food is great, and the people are more than welcoming. Uh, also, the weather is just uh, fantastic. What more could anyone really ask for? So, uh, Grenada, Grenada and Karakou are certainly a place I would like to go back to. At the southern end of the Grenadines, in the southeastern Caribbean Sea, Grenada is comprised of the main island, also called Grenada, and smaller surrounding islands which include Karakou. Grenada is volcanic and is home to dense rainforest beautiful beaches and bountiful marine life. I was told by Godwin, a local boatman, that Grenada has 365 beaches and it is from a few of these that most of the dive operators work, although there are some with purpose-built marinas. Grenada has a host of easily accessible wrecks to dive. Most of these are in the comfortable 20 to 30 metre depth range and all are home to an abundance of marine life. While many species of smaller fish are content to graze the decks for food, others, such as this predatory jack, dart in amongst the shoals to try and catch an easy meal. Not all wrecks are large. This tugboat sits in 20 metres of water and, although small, is still home to a good variety of marine life, including this shoal of yellow snapper. The Sloop Buccaneer is in 27 metres and seemed deserted of fish on this occasion, but I am told it is normally home to thousands of small bait fish. But it's not just the wrecks that are good to dive. Only a short distance from the Golden Sands are coral reefs. These reefs do vary in their structure and content and are made up of both hard and soft corals. This mixture gives a good basis for many species of marine life to thrive. Few so strange and wonderful as this Spanish lobster. Spotted moray eels are solitary animals, 
in this confrontation is possibly an accidental infringement of another's territory. Not at all phased by the commotion, this giant green moray continues on its hunt across the reef for food. During my brief visit, I never did get to see a turtle or a shark, but one of my dive guides, Robin, did show me this footage he had shot previously. It's just a matter of timing and a little bit of luck. Last, but by no means least, there is the spectacular underwater sculpture park. These and many other creations are in about seven meters of water and accessible to both divers and snorkelers. I had no time to visit the lush forests of Grenada, but did get a chance to see a few coastal venues like the historic Fort Frederick and the House of Chocolate, where the complete history of Grenadian chocolate was revealed to me. A short drive through St George's, the capital, took me to the open market where there is a wonderful selection of local fruit and veg, as well as being a good place to look for presents to take home. And of course, there are the spices. After all, these are the Spice Islands. Next, it was time to take the ferry to Kerikyu, a 90 minute journey to the small northern island. Hillsborough sits comfortably on the seafront and was as welcoming as I hoped it would be. As with Grenada, the dive boats here work from the golden sands off the shore and give easy access for loading equipment and divers. Diving can be close to shore or a short boat journey to the many stack islands and rocks a few miles out to sea. My first encounter was with the now familiar Spanish lobster, who in my very vivid imagination was welcoming me to carry The last moments of my last dive brought in two spotted eagle rays, which really did round the whole trip off perfectly. 